Hi everyone, today we have a product comparison review of the JC Ixon T420D and the small JC Ixon T3A. We are comparing these two products against each other and show you which one might be better for you. Let's begin with the JC Ixon T420D. Let's open up the box. As you can see, everything is neatly packed with enough foam for shipping. The box is built up out of three layers. At the first layer, we have a total of six soldering tips for the soldering pens. There are three different soldering pens included with this soldering station. A little more on that later. At the top here, we have a total of six tips for the soldering station and three more tips in the middle, which we will show you in a bit. Along with the power cable, one soldering pen, a ground cable and two arms to put the soldering pens in. At the bottom box, there's two more soldering pens. When we dive one level deeper into the box, we will find the soldering holders on the left and right of the box. The right holder has tip cleaner and the left holder has a sponge. The soldering pen holder has a hinge to adjust the angle to where it points. Next up, we have the soldering station itself. It's very well packed at the bottom of the box. At both sides of the soldering station you will find rails to slide the holders in. We will also be showing you how to put the soldering station and its accessories together. Let's grab one of these soldering holders and put it on the right side of the soldering station. We're starting with the one on the right. You can slide it in from the front to the back. Do the same for the left holder. It's very easy to slide them into place. Next, we have the two arms which we can screw onto the sides of the holders. They're not required. Neither are both of the holders. You should always set up what works best for you. Once these are in place, we are connecting the ground wire and both of the holders connectors to the back of the soldering station. Now we can grab a soldering pen and remove the velcro around it. The connector for the soldering pen is at the back of the holder. We can pick any C245 soldering tip we want and push it into the soldering pen. Let's put that into the holder for now. We'll also connect an additional soldering pen to the left holder. Each soldering pen uses their own size of soldering tips. So make sure to check you are using the correct size for the right soldering pen. Here we have all the soldering pens to show you the difference. We can put the C245 soldering tips in the tip holder at the top of the pen holders. However, this is something we cannot do with the smallest C115 soldering tips that also come along with the soldering station. You can use the soldering tip switcher to change the soldering tips quickly. Now we can remove the screen's plastic and power the solder station up to take a closer look at the inner works. We'll give you a quick rundown of the menu. We can open it up by clicking the middle button. The language is conveniently placed as the first option in the menu. We can turn off the sound feedback the soldering station gives us under the sound settings. Configure your time settings under the time tab. Under the restore section in the settings menu, you can quickly restore all the different settings of the device. If you ever mess something up, you can just go back to this window. Next, we have the temperature tab in the main menu. This is where you can configure the temperature unit used in the soldering station. Under the level option, you can set up the different channels preset temperatures. The compensate setting becomes interesting once you have to recalibrate your station. We will do a separate video on this in the future. At the bottom of the main menu we have the dormancy option. Here we can configure the dormant temperature of the soldering station. The default value is 90 degrees celsius. 
The default delay for when the soldering station goes dormant is 10 seconds. The display option is a strange one, we recommend keeping it on close and not change it to open like we did. Now we have the graph option, which shows you a graph of the temperature on the left and the power on the right. When we take the pen out, you can see the temperature shoots up very quickly. Okay, that was it for the T420D. Now it's time to take a look at the compact JC Ixun T3A. When we open the box, we're greeted with a white box and a box that contains the station. Let's put the white box aside for now and start with the soldering station itself. There is a proof of purchase card in there, along with a manual. These were also included in the T420D. The station feels very solid for its size and looks very stylish. The white box that fills up the other 50% of the main box contains all the accessories for the T3A. A soldering pen, a power cable, three soldering tips and a ground cable. There's also an additional box together with the main box. This box contains the soldering pen holder. Let's grab the soldering station and the holder. As you can see, there's no way to attach this holder to the soldering station. You'll just have to let it stand on its own. Let's attach the holder cable to the soldering station and grab the soldering pen. This one goes into the front of the station. Now we can grab a soldering tip and push it into the soldering pen. Now that we've gone over the contents of the box, we can power up the T3A. If you want to switch the language of the T3A, you can click the set button, then go to the second menu option and click the turning button, click it again to change the language, and use the channel button to go back in the menu. Let's go over all the menu options really quick. The maximum temperature is set to 500 degrees Celsius by default. We recommend a max temperature of 400 degrees Celsius to get a longer lifespan out of your soldering tip. However, for the smaller soldering tips included with the T420D, we don't recommend going higher than 350 degrees Celsius. The lock temp option locks the temperature so you can't accidentally change it. The dormancy settings are pretty much the same to that of the T420D. The sound allows you to turn off the feedback of the buttons. At the temp level option you can configure the channel levels of temperatures. Ok, now that we have shown you both of the stations, we're going to do the side by side comparison. Let's start with some points we really liked about the JC Ixon T420D. Despite only having two holders, JC included three different soldering pens of different sizes. This is a really nice detail for nano soldering. When we say nano soldering, we mean laying down jumper wires and resistors. Also, each holder has their own tip switcher. This means that left-sided people can also use this feature while attaching a holder. Not all soldering stations on the market have this. Switching the channels on the T420D is definitely a lot easier than on the T3A. Having three separate buttons is really convenient. The JC T420D is ready for soldering within 2 seconds, which means it heats up extremely fast. You can use both soldering pens at the same time. This means it is possible to have one soldering station for two people. The menu is really easy to operate using the navigation buttons, as it's their only function. Of course, with every positive, there's also some important points that mustn't be overlooked. The smaller C115 solder tips are too small to put in the holders. This is pretty annoying if you quickly want to swap the soldering tip of your nano soldering pen. There's three soldering pens, but there's only two connectors on the back of the soldering station. It's therefore not possible to have all three of them connected at the same time. We're looking forward to see what JC can do with these things in the future. Next, we'll go over all the points we liked about the JC Ixun T3A. It's really compact and holds a lot of power for its size, heating up the soldering pen in only a few seconds. The menu has a lot of options for the size of the station. We were happy to see that the holder has the same switcher functionality as the T420D holders. Also, for this one we have some points that shouldn't be overlooked. 
there was only a big soldering pen included in the box. Without a nano soldering pen, it makes laying jumpers and soldering resistors very hard to do. You also can't use the holder for a nano soldering pen even if you bought one separately, because it simply doesn't fit. Ok, so now that we've made a quick comparison going over each point, let's find out which one is the right one for you. If you're soldering all day long and laying jumpers without much issue, or if you are ready for the next step in your micro soldering career, then the JC Ixon T420D is the soldering station for you. If you are getting started with micro soldering, the JC Ixon T3A is definitely for you. Don't let the small size of this soldering station fool you. It has a ton of functionality which is visible in the menu, 